is this i think we're live now yes all right hello welcome everyone welcome to the first vlm webinar of 2021 thank you for joining us today before we dive into today's topic and introduce our speakers let me first take you through the technical bits of the webinar uh, the webinar will take about 45 minutes to an hour after a short presentation of vlm by chairman frank hule we will have a three-way conversation on robots and fashion logistics after this conversation, our speakers are available for all of your questions. We'd love to hear from you, so just post your questions in the chat on the right. There are also some technical details uh, in the chat uh, if you encounter some, some problems. But first things first, I'd like to give the word to Frank Hule, president of the of VLM. Hello. Good uh, morning. You're speaking with uh, Frank Hulen. Uh, I'm uh, chairman of the, the VLM Community Fashion Logistics, and we have organized this, uh, this webinar. Um, Jeroen, can you show uh, a PowerPoint uh, slide? It is on. Okay. Well, I, I don't see it, but uh, maybe that's my problem. Okay. If it's on, then... Uh, well, uh, this this webinar is about uh, uh, Magazino and uh, Isaac and uh, the mobile picking robot, which is which is uh, used now in uh, in Krefeld, and uh, we think it's very interesting to learn a little bit uh, more about it. Um, we've we've made the, the following uh, agenda. Can you show the agenda, Jeroen? Yeah. After my uh, introduction, we will have a, a three-way uh, conversation about uh, the, the robots in the in the warehouse. And uh, Jeroen Feld is uh, chairing it, and uh, Michael uh, Gresco, um, the head of the distribution center of uh, Isaac and Krefeld, is of course joining, and also uh, Julia Schultz, field manager of the of the robots from uh, Magazino. Um, and after that, there will be a, a, a discussion, of course, and uh, question and answers, and uh, and he will close up uh, um, just before, um, um, uh, say, uh, uh, one thirty. Um, to explain a little bit more about the uh, uh, community fashion logistics, what are our goals? Uh, well, we have uh, we focus on innovation in the in the fashion uh, supply chain. Uh, Frank, are you still here? I think we have a bit of a technical problem, so um, I think I'm going to take over from here. Um, Frank, uh, Frank, Frank's offline. Sorry for that. Um, so the the, fa the fashion group um, in, with, of VLM uh, is uh, has a spe is a specialized group of managers active in the fashion logistics field. Uh, the, the main goal of the of the group is to share experience and knowledge. Um, they are organized um, in a LinkedIn group, but also they meet several times a year uh, with warehouse meetings as well as um, as, uh, as as a yearly congress. Of course, uh, given the situation that we're currently in, it's a little bit difficult. But that's why we decided to move online and try to spread the knowledge uh, via webinars. This is the first webinar, webinar in a series that we'll uh, we'll 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 we'll, we'll, um, we'll do this year. Uh, robotics is, of course, a very important topic, and that's why we decided to uh, to, to uh, take this uh, this one first. Um, like like uh, like I said, we we discussed uh, several topics on uh, on innovation, several mainly about omnichannel uh, channel logistics, about I, about IT solutions, uh, e-commerce, e-fulfillment, RFID, etc all topics that are of importance uh, to our members. And of course, like I said before, we visit, we visit all kinds of companies and to see what, what best practices are, uh, are being uh, organized already. So if, you, if this appeals to you, and if you're in a Dutch speaking uh, world, part of the world, then please do reach out to us and you're welcome to join us at any time. Um, you can join, you can, you can look at the, the VLM uh, website, vlm.nl. And um, uh, if you have ideas on future topics, then also please do share them with us. We're always open to new suggestions and people who are willing to organize them uh, with us. So 
looking at today, what are your objectives uh, for today? Um, what we want to do is first to get a better insight in the, the Essex uh, operation, uh, look at why this decided to, to, to go for, for, for robots and the discussion that we're going to have in a few minutes is mainly about the three focal, focal fields. First of all, how the decision process. How do you come to the point that you that you want to want to that you decide to use robots in your warehouse operation? The second part, and which, which is also a very important part, is, is if if you decide to do this, um, what what is the, what, what is the implementation uh, 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 tra trajectory? What are the what are the pro what projects? What are the timelines? What are the issues that you're facing with? And it's, and the last last part, what is the future outlook in robotics? Um, what what developments do both? Uh, Michael, from from a user perspective, see as well as Julia from a from a from a producer side. What are developments that we can see in the next uh, the next uh, uh, next few years? So that's that's the main goal for today. So I would like to say, even though it didn't this one uh, didn't start yet, let's let's dive into our uh, into our uh, into our um, uh, discussion. Yeah. So um, yeah. Hi. Everyone, uh, I'm Julia. Um, I'm part of the Magazino team. Um, we are a yeah, Munich-based uh, robotics company um, doing autonomous uh, mobile pick robots. Maybe some of you already saw some nice videos um, where yeah, robots are picking uh, shoeboxes, and I'm um, yeah responsible for all new sales activities around Europe. Um, so uh, going into the warehouses, having a first warehouse check if your warehouse is um, yeah, ready for robotics and how we can implement those robots. And of course, also together um, discuss a use case and a business case um, to add value to op your operations. So a warm welcome from my side. Michael. Hello everyone, as well from my side. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm Director of Distribution at ASICS uh, EMEA, sitting uh, here in Krefeld in our European Distribution Center. And uh, yeah, happy to, to share with you some insights of the, of the joint project with ASICS and Magazzino. Excellent. Um, Michael, could you please give, uh, give us a little bit more detail about your operation in Krefeld, about size, what, what size it is, what kind, of, what kind of business do you serve, etc. Sure. Um, yeah, um, let me do that on the base of two slides, uh, if, if you allow. So basically what we are looking at here in this building is uh, around um, 75,000 square meters. Um, we have yeah, a huge warehouse uh, with 60,000 big locations, 50,000 pallet locations, etc. And we are working with around 250 people in average. As of today, there are much more in the building but I will come to that um, later, right? Um, from ASICS uh, Krefeld here, we are basically distributing to all channels across Europe. Okay. So it's, uh, you know, you can imagine that we have uh, full truckloads of uh, wholesale season start uh, drop till uh, we order for our um, yeah, own stores, own distribution, uh, our own stores um, in, uh, in a full price stores across Europe. Um, fast replenishment and as well since very recently, to be honest, uh, we are serving the e-com channel across Europe as well from this building um, here. Yeah. Do you have, can, can you share some figures with us in terms of order volume, if, if, that's, if that's possible? Yeah, basically we do have in ASICS, we do have, uh, let's say, two warehouses in, in mainland Europe. One is in the south of France, um, which is, uh, let's say, serving more the, the southern European market. And uh, we are serving uh, yeah, the total total market, the countries that you see here in green. And um, the outbound volume, let's say per day, is definitely far above 100,000 pieces that uh, leaves here on a daily basis. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how how much of that? How many of those are uh, online or online sales, e-commerce sales? Yeah, you can imagine that over the past uh, year, in particular 2020, the share of, um, let's say, own D2C and wholesale, even brick and mortar, is uh, reduced. And the share of e-com, uh, being at Essex.com, um, our own website, or even of our wholesale partners, is obviously growing a lot. Mm. Um, I cannot tell you exactly the share right now, but um, definitely the share of online is growing, and uh, which which makes it, let's say, 
which makes uh, the, the business changing, right? When you look at mm. just five absolutely. years ago. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, could you could you give an insight in uh, how, how you've implemented the tool robot and what process uh, you outline the process where the you where the robots are implemented? Yeah. So basically from a principle let's say we we strongly believe being a you know japanese uh, brand we strongly believe in the kaizen in the continuous improvement right and this principle of continuous continuous improvement and putting quality in the products as well as in our operational processes um, start let it, let let us start thinking about okay what can we do basically in our building in order to you know, increase the flexibility in a multi-channel distribution center. And you can imagine that we have, uh, let's say, as the business is evolving and changing more and more towards um, small parcel, uh, small quant small volume parcels, but more frequent orders, more and more towards e -com, we definitely need to continuously improve that area, right? That specific part of the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, our, our belief was and still is that um, we need to remain flexible as a, as a, in, as a distribution center, whereas the Magazino robots are exactly fitting into the particular part mm -hmm. to, to gain a little bit more efficiency and speed, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, well, what we are basically doing is um, we are we, we are now in, in the area of speed and flexibility with the robots, we can benefit in multiple areas, right? So first of all, um, in the human capital area, right? So Magazino robots will help us to not, you know, reduce stuff and not reduce the number of people we have in the building. That's not our first aim, but the first aim is really to increase increase the flexibility and make the work, let's say, more more easy and more 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 be better for our own people, right? which means that we, we are having the Magazino robots in particular for the night shifts, for the early morning shifts, for the Saturday shifts, and for the Sunday shifts even, where, you know, it's difficult or even more expensive to have uh, humans um, working, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's the area there. Then, uh, obviously, one of the, one of the reasons was um, innovation, right? So looking at a distribution center like this, um, having a, let's say fancy product uh, in the building um, makes us as an employer as well uh, yeah, attractive I hope and uh, as well as a motiv motivation for our staff that's, uh, mm. that's one area as well yeah. mm. and then if you want to really look into let's say what and how the implementation process at A6 was um, I think I can show you this picture which makes it a little bit self-explainable because the reason why Magazzino is that basically you see it here you see on the picture our shelves that existed already before in the building and you see here our layout of the picking locations right mm -hmm. and where the and basically where the arrow is on the on the layout there you see the pick card and the magazine robot right so basically the project started um, like that you know that uh, we we made business cases obviously we discussed with the team blah 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 how can we do it and then when it came to the phase of okay you can we can start now then uh, it was almost as easy as putting the robot into the floor let them map the environment let them mm -hmm. understand environment how does it look like here where can i you know speed up a little bit mm -hmm. i need to slow down where do i need to pick where i need to drop and um, then we started really with the with the mapping phase and implementation phase and testing phase already right so that was that was quite well um yeah well in terms of the project um, obviously we had um, we had as well an IT implementation, right? So not only the physical implementation into the building, but as well the IT implementation, which showed us that uh, IT uh, is uh, is important, right? Uh, as uh, interface building is is key. So the better the interface and the more information mm -hmm. we can have with the robot in terms of um, you know um, stock per location, article per location, um, yet a full inventory position, more and more information that the robot gets, the faster, the better you can operate. Mm -hmm. 
and um, as well feedback back, right? Mm -hmm. So that was a key and essential topic. Yeah. In a previous interview, you stated that uh, you've looked at uh, various uh, automation uh, uh, solutions uh, and also solutions for different kind of processes. What was the main reason uh, behind starting with the, with the picking process uh, um, and or then going to robotics itself? No, the main reason, and as I said uh, said before, is that we have looked at our processes, in particular for the you know for the fast replenishment, small quantity orders like ecom and fast mm -hmm. and there mm -hmm. we are also for ourselves that um, let's say the picking process there is uh, very time intensive right because obviously picking a full carton of shoes for a wholesale customer mm -hmm. is uh, is you know one move and you have 12 shoe boxes in your hand and you can put a label and put it on the bed but for uh, for to, to to pick 12 individual ecom orders obviously takes more time right mm -hmm. And this was the, the pain process, let's say, that we have identified in terms of performance. Okay. okay. With this, let's say, was, was uh, yeah, the thought started that we need to, to start optimizing the picking process, in particular mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. quantity orders. But I, I can also imagine that it gives you a lot more flexibility, given the fact that uh, later in the day, the orders come in and, and you can pro process them at night and then ship them out at the first exactly. uh, opportunity. Exactly, because obviously in uh, in your in a situation where you have uh, where, where where speed is key, and that's ecom obviously and fast replenishment, there we can uh, we can work overnight. As I said, we can work in the early morning, and when you when you look at ecom tendent, normally uh, even you or me, we are ordering on the weekend, right? So we are mm -hmm. in the time in the late evenings or in the weekend to you know place our order at essex.com mm -hmm. or whatever. And that is where we see as well that the orders are piling up, you know, mm -hmm. and having the robot here who can over the weekend and during the night, you know, start working and start, mm -hmm. picking, start preparing the orders already mm -hmm. so that the humans who come in the early morning on Monday, they already can take what is picked, you know, put it into the box, put the label on and out. And that is very mm -hmm. important for us, obviously, mm -hmm. obviously for our consumers and customers. Right? Mm -hmm. And then what made you what made you decide um, to go for a I mean the solution what a lot of solution that we've seen in the past here is goods to man solutions. This is more or less a, a, a man to good solution similar to the human to the human operator um, yeah. but less disturbing of course in in, 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 your, in your setup and, and, and process. What made you decide uh, to say okay I'm going for let's say the light solution, or the easy solution to to have a robot implement in my process instead of saying uh, I'm going for a full uh, goods to man solution for these kind of uh, small smaller volumes. Yeah, well, I think that um, you know we are in a situation where the market is evolving very much, and uh, and you see it. So for us, the the key element is that we remain flexible, right? Mm -hmm. And we have in, in particular in this building here in this distribution center, we have the situation that's still a big portion is valuated services is mm -hmm. manual work labeling uh, price mm -hmm. in uh, security tagging and things like that where we need to remain manual right mm -hmm. on the other side in the channel of ecom etc we needed to improve um, the the operations and improve really the the the, the, the through and mm -hmm. there we decided to for magazino actually because it's an investment that we are doing mm -hmm. which pays off quite swiftly, right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a horizon of uh, really a couple of months, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we see the first benefits, and that was very important for us, that we find a solution that we can bring in fastly mm -hmm. in without, you know, investing tremendous amount of money or mm -hmm. changing the layout. Mm -hmm. Look at the process, find a solution that fits, and uh, let's say, yeah, gain immediately, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, the business five years ago was different than today, and yeah. for the business will be in five years. So that yeah. was yeah, yeah, for us. Right. Okay. Um, one important question that came out of our community, indeed, was the was the investment uh, question. So thank you for answering that already. Um, but uh, Julia, could could you please uh, elaborate a little bit more about performance figures of the of the robots? Uh, what are operating hours, productivity, etc. What do, if you're yeah. building a business case, what what what, what figures should you uh, calculate? Yeah, sure. Um, so basically, um, like 
um, really major impact on the performance and the cap capacity of the robot system is the how you integrate the robots. So um, how you design um, the area. So in the ASICS case, we started with a really simple area, right? We um, we wanted to start pretty fast. We have those cards. There's not much um, investment to be made in the infrastructure. Um, so it's a lot about how you define the pre and downstreaming process. For example, yeah. to give you an example, um, if we have um, like a conveyor belt, um, the robot can just push us boxes constantly on this belt, um, and uh, as a like a, as a downstreaming process, there can be a sorter or either for like single items, like yeah. in e-commerce, um, yeah, you have sixty to eighty percent like orders with one shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even like yeah, just let the the picks to the robot, um, the robot hands it over to a conveyor and there's an automated packing machine afterwards. Mm. So you don't have a um, machine to go, uh, machine to human uh, solutions anymore. You have a fully autonomous um, process, right? Mm. And this all impacts the performance of the robot. Mm. Because in, in the case, in the process at the moment at ASICS, we are sorting also per order the um, boxes to a specific location on the pick card. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's an intelligence behind mm -hmm. the robot not just have to pick and just um, randomly um, pull the boxes on a conveyor or on a cart. Mm -hmm. uh, the robot is even sorting the boxes to a special mm -hmm. location. And of course, this takes more time than just yeah, yeah. Yeah, pulling boxes. And um, But to give you a rough um, understanding what we see at the moment um, in our project, um, so we are around um, 40 to um, yeah, 55 picks an hour. Um, on a, um, yeah, the robot is able to work 18 hours per day. Mm -hmm. um, so I say the two is more like a ma marathon runner than a sprinter. So it mm -hmm. can work longer hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, but it's more like the avail availability is much more higher. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, if you see the performance on an hourly base, um, humans are in some processes still faster, like mm -hmm. replenishment or mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. other ones. In, 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 in previous sessions, uh, the interesting figure was 1.6, right? And 1.6 is a robot can replace in terms of performance 1.6 people in the mm -hmm. two shift model in 16 hours. Okay. And in this particular narrow case that we have here in this building, right? Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, where the, the, the return on investment and things like that. Then we yeah. Yeah. However, <laughs> once, uh, as Julia said, once uh, we will look at the automated packing machine and an automated belt, etc., then this figure ideally will increase. Yeah. There was a yeah. question, um, are the Magazzino robots also in use for same day shipping? So during day shifts, which I would uh, like to, to, to reply now to, sure. because um, obviously, and that is one benefit, which I guess didn't mention, is that uh, we the robots are driving next to humans. So mm -hmm. we are using them in 16 to 18 hours a day as well during the day shift, actually. Mm -hmm. right? So And our ALs, and you will see it hopefully soon in the video, that our mm -hmm. ALs are, let's say, one meter, 61 meter, 65, where you can, you know, a robot can overtake a human with a pick card and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So that's something mm -hmm. we are doing and uh, on, on, on the big field now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But can also, also imagine that that limits your productivity in some way, in, in some respect, that you cannot uh, incre increase uh, productivity all too far because it, uh, because you have a, a possibly dangerous situation, etc. Yeah, that's true. However, the, the robot is very, uh, let's say, uh, risk averse, I would say. Mm. <laughs> and uh, believe me, I tried it very much, you know, okay. to, to <laughs> speak with the uh, robot. Uh, but uh, definitely the robot uh, never put me in a dangerous situation. Yeah, so that's okay. with all the cameras and sensors that, that he has around him. Mm. Uh, that is really a safe, uh, safe game. On, mm. uh, and awesome. Maybe adding to this question about the um, same day shipping, like um, I think one um, big advantage is the utilization of the robot system. So you can start um, at five or four in the morning. So um, the, there is not like we want to flatten the peaks on a daily base, right? So that you don't have those um, yeah peaks 
or uh, transferring to the to the pickers in the morning, but the robots already did an amount of orders before humans um, mm -hmm. like will arrive in the warehouse. Um, so um, yeah, this has a major effect. Also, um, of course, it has to be discussed with the customer how the order transmission works. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, the robots need orders, and this has mm -hmm. to be. That has to come from the interface from the mm -hmm. WPS. So this is also what we um, yeah talk about in the in the uh, the pre-project um, phase. How uh, this all works and how do we uh, get a fluent tra mm -hmm. order transmission to the robots? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can I can I can imagine certainly if you say it's an addition to you to the human workforce um, by already taking the spikes out of the out of the demand uh, curves. I think I think that's that's also a valuable argument when you consider when you discuss with uh, with your workers representatives in in getting more acceptance for it. And what what you're actually trying to do is say that the, the more let's say the more stupid work is being outsourced to to a robot and uh, where humans can add value. We'd like them to add the value because the, the demand peaks are gro the demand is growing so fast and you cannot get per staff in, in most cases anyway or it's difficult. Let me put it like that. So that's that's so that's a good addition to 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 to, to create more value with with people Absolutely. with the same people. I think. Absolutely. So yeah. yeah. So so thank you very much. But with terms of performance, also there's also the other side. Um, in terms of outages, uh, it, how much how much percent do you see that that, that there are there are issues or, or still problems? So let's say. Um, uh, Growing, growing pains. Let me put it like mm -hmm. that. When it comes to, to the robots, but what are the main reasons for 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 robots to to stop performing? When you when you look at the picture here, um, you see how let's say the the shoe boxes are piling up on the shelves, and that is let's say an ideal scenario, obviously. Huh? So the robot needs to have a certain warehouse hygiene factor mm -hmm. in order to be able to work, right? And this, to be honest, this helped us. As well. I mean, the rules are, are are not not huge and they are not difficult. Huh? You need to have maybe a little bit of a distance between uh, one pile to the other, but it's not like this. It's uh, it's it's below a centimeter or around a centimeter that uh, that you can work with, mm -hmm. and the piles need to be always you know front facing, right? So mm -hmm. with the to the to the robot. And mm -hmm. this helped us, to be honest, in this particular area to uh, increase as well the, the warehouse hygiene factor and to reduce, obviously, as well, the, the um, yeah, to improve the stop counts, to reduce mistakes, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. humans. Mm -hmm. But the situation that you see here on the picture is something that the robot can work with. Mm -hmm. As well, the stacks of five, six, seven cartons uh, above each other is something that is fine for the robot. Mm -hmm. As long as you know the robot can pick from the top, right? Mm -hmm. If the robot mm -hmm. needs to choose, and that's something that the robot obviously can do, which we have not implemented, is when you have different uh, different skews in one stack, then the robot can as well, you know, pick uh, pick one from the bottom or something, mm -hmm. push the others back. And there, I guess uh, that the number of cartons uh, is, is is too high, but. Mm -hmm. In general, we have a single skew pick location, which then helps obviously to um, to fill the locations with uh, mm -hmm. product, right? So okay, so if so, if that's wrong, then it might be that they have issues uh, picking. What well, other, other other reasons that you do uh, as a censoring or what 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 kind of other issues do you see? Uh, we we have them now running since uh, actually a couple of months, and um, I mean they automatically know when the battery is empty, so they go back. to charging station they uh, uh, you need to clean the sensors obviously, now and then if there is a dust situation or something but um, that's basically it and uh, okay. what we have seen now over the past weeks that if there is you know a situation for the robot maybe there is a pellet in a way and he really cannot pass through and he's stuck or whatever then he sends an information to a, to an app uh, and uh, then the operator you know can jump there and, and support somehow I see you. I, I see one question that I would like to add immediately. This uh, from uh, Dennis. Uh, Dennis Bow. How many robots are currently uh, running in uh, Essex operation? And perhaps in addition to that, so that everyone has a good idea of what it actually looks like. Perhaps Julia, you can also uh, show the video. Uh, yeah, of, uh, sure, sure. Um, I yeah. think Mark, you just have to stop screening. <laughs> do I? Okay. Sharing. I think then I can. How can I do that? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, just a second. 
And I will show, um, I think it's better to see it on the, on the video. Um, the number is six, by the way. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, exactly. so in the video, there are still, um, I think, four running. <laughs> so now there, um, there are six in, in the area. And before playing the video, um, like we are in, um, yeah, in the operations at the moment of um, to be also business, like reorder business, so small items per order, what uh, Michael already said. Um, and I hope you can all see the video. Um, so this is how the charging station looks like. So the robot gets orders, it automatically, autonomously drives and starts um, picking. So um, at ASICS at the moment, we are doing especially the outbound orders, so picking, um, because as Michael said, they have SKU, um, the same SKU per location. So humans are super fast in replenishing, right? They are taking mm -hmm. five boxes, pulling them in. Um, so the business case for the robot is, of course, much more better um, in, in picking the items. And um, we have like this integrated shelf, we call it backpack, where we can transport uh, within one picking route up to 16 boxes. And the robot is then like doing its round, uh, taking 16 boxes and handovering in this case on like a pick card. It's a pretty simple handover station, um, no need to change your infrastructure. Um, and we even sort the boxes on this location mm -hmm. that the human is coming, taking the card, bringing it directly to the packing and um, then the, the goods can be packed. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, our goal um, in a future ta uh, vision or um, common goal is to also, um, like for example, the singles. What I mentioned is also to to like maybe aut automatically pack them, or um, that we have a um, an autom uh, autonomous flow, mm -hmm. uh, automated flow. Um, so yeah, that's basically the process we are working in at ASICS so far, and um, yeah, six robots at the moment. Um, are, are, are there order, can it be that uh, that orders are split over over several robots, or is it uh, when sorting to the cart, or is it every one robot is just p p working on one uh, order? Mm -hmm. That can be definitely. So okay. it, it really depends. Um, basically, what we are doing is we are creating a batch of um, outbound deliveries orders mm -hmm. and handing it over via the IT interface to the robot operating system, and then. Mm -hmm. the robot operating system knows where in which location which product is basically and um, optimizes the, the batch based on the number of currently available robots based on certain priority logic that we give them based on the environment etc and based of the free um, pick cards currently so it can be that uh, let's say all six robots are working on one particular order if, if needed fulfilling them and then moving to the next so but mm -hmm. that's within the logic of the of the operating system yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and the best maybe to add uh, something to this like um the optimal way for us is really to get um a pool of of um of picking tasks mm -hmm. so that we um can batch like we can um apply our logic of batching mm -hmm. it to robots so be for example, if we only get uh, 40 picking tasks um, al um, aligned to one card, um, it really um, limits us in um, using the robot system in an optimal way and mm -hmm. also increasing the performance. This also has an impact sure. um, yeah. on the whole on the whole running system. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If I can enter one uh, this one question that already came in from uh, Yasman Kabrani. I hope I pronounced correctly. So sorry if I'm not. Uh, what happens if a box is dropped during during the pick during the pick or uh, or during transport? That is indeed something that uh, would be um, announced with an information to the operator, and the operator would need to help the robot out. So the mm -hmm. robot cannot, you know, go there and pick it up, um, which is uh, which is yeah, which is left up. Okay. And number of robots. So we started indeed with four robots in a rather small area, which was let's say our pilot. Right, because we wanted to prove the concept first in a in a rather small area with a indeed yeah let's say limited investment but still with a quite decent number of robots to to have the performance and mm -hmm. uh, over over the past yeah months we saw that okay it's going quite okay so we increased the number to six and uh, mm -hmm. that was I think in December the last two robots came in and since then are operating uh, in production. 
Right? Okay. Increase as well the space, right? So from mm -hmm. a small number of shelves to now actually full shelf area in the building. Okay. okay. Um, so um, when we come to the, to the implementation part, um, you decide to go for 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 magazine or robots. What is the timeline uh, that normally you normally have to take into account from the point that you say, okay, let's let's join, let's start our partnership uh, until the moment that uh, the first robots are uh, online and running. That yeah. fully depends on your IT, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. <laughs> but well, I think even like, in inside and how how long it took you to uh, to uh, to be. Uh, you want? You I think from the first meeting um, to really like um, having the robots on site, I think it was around uh, like in, in, on average it's around one year. But I think like we had around six or seven months that we really had the robots on site um, and like during um, this time before um, we had a lot of meetings about like how is the process, what are the specifications for the IT interface to get that all prepared before the robots are coming on site and not just starting then doing everything. Mm -hmm. So that is, um, it needs some, um, some discussions in advance, of course, and then it always depends how the approval process and uh, budget of the customer um, yeah, how this process internally works mm -hmm. to get uh, some those, those kind of projects approved. Um, so this is usually the let's we call it like the the, the cycle uh, before really the robot got delivered. Sure. Um, when it comes to when it comes to implementation, how does the customer have to change a lot? Did you have to change a lot on your technical infrastructure, say your racking, uh, sorry, your uh, shelves, your shelf infrastructure, etc., or the, the surface or anything? Actually, not. And that's that was really uh, one of the, the big big advantages and one of the decision points as well towards Magazine, right? Because that's something that basically we used our own shelves that we had already. We did not change the floor. We added some, uh, you know, reflective um, stickers or tape mm -hmm. here and there for the robot to to help understand so the environment. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, bought the the big cards, and that that was basically from an infrastructure it right. So it's uh, mm -hmm. it is our own Wi-Fi that we already had in the building, which uh, the guys are connected to. Um, obviously, in the IT part, right, the interface uh, that is something that you can either do in a in a big scale. Right, with all the details sending back and forth, or you can reduce it, right? And we mm -hmm. decided, to be honest, to do a phased approach there. You know, mm -hmm. to the first phase, keep the IT interface as uh, with only the, the, the really mandatory data in order to start get the things rolling. And now in the, in the second phase, we are over increasing the number of data or the, the, the inf inf detail grade of information that we are sharing back and forth mm -hmm. in order to improve the, the efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. and as well, in order to you know get more information from the robot because you can imagine that when the robot is driving next to the shelf his eyes are open right so what he can do is he can for instance as well count the number of uh, units in your pick location no? it's a uh, inventory control at, in a certain way right? or he can confer that a particular pick location is empty while he's passing through which mm -hmm. is yet let's say live and not yet within our business case but it's something uh, as a future also what yep. they have as well they can measure you know the size of the, the volume of your your parcels mm -hmm. which can be an information that we can send back and forth through the systems in order to yeah. increase the level of the thing of the future that you would like to dive deeper into the yeah. use information that the robot is uh, collecting for improving exactly. your power okay. yeah. uh, from from um from an employee point of view i mean uh, it's it's you, in a in a weird way you could say it's sort of a competition, uh, especially given the fact that it's it's a it's a man to goods or a robot to goods uh, solution. How did you deal with that? How did that process go? Was it was it an easy process or? Uh, I must admit it was um, not a, it was a good process. So what we did very early in the conversations, we included our workers council, huh, which typically in Germany is is quite strong in 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 companies this size. So we included the workers' council, you know, explained what are our goals with this automation and with the robots, huh? which again was uh, to help staff and not to lay off staff um, in the now changing environment. Um, I think at a certain point of time, we had uh, obviously our quarterly all hands meetings in the building where we 
invited uh, Magazine or so to speak, where we showed uh, videos um, at a certain point of time. We had the robots here, so we made some showcases in the building and uh, you know let people touch uh, and 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 watch the robots. And um, that helped people to understand, okay, hey, it's not uh, not an enemy that is coming into the building, but it's someone that can can help me and and can can help us as a team to become more performant, right? And uh, you know, performance KPIs in the warehouse are uh, one of the key element. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah. Okay, so the, the the resistance was uh, you 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 sorted the resistance out by good communication, so to speak. Yeah, that was that was the idea, really, to yeah. communicate and uh, to cut uh, down yeah. any kind of resistance. Yeah. If you take a look at the implementation pro process, what are your, would you say, your lessons learned, or uh, what would you do differently if you you would have to have to do it over again? What I would do differently, I think that um, there are certain elements, in particular in the in the interface and IT topic, um, where we would benefit from where we when we would have made uh, put more effort into that, you know, put more resources in particular on 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 ethics side into this topic in order to to speed up certain things because you can imagine that i mean if if you come up with a project uh, maybe a little bit unannounced uh, to the to the general it team and they have a project chart uh, agenda already for the year then it's difficult to to squeeze in some time in order to support that and uh, mm -hmm. that, that's why i was saying it a couple of minutes ago as well as mm -hmm. it is is a topic mm -hmm. Um, because if the interface works properly, then the rest is, 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 is fine, I guess. Yeah. And uh, yeah. maybe one, one remark: so we had uh, and that we had for a long time um, so-called deployers from Magazino on site, who are here um, three days a week, four days a week with the robots in the, in mm -hmm. the phase and are supporting the go live, right? Mm -hmm. And supporting the ramp up phase. After a couple of months. Um, they leave and they hand over everything to the uh, own operators. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, this is a situation which really helps as well to to understand, mm -hmm. to, to find out the details and to increase mm -hmm. and the performance. Yeah. And Julia, from your perspective, what would you would you say uh, would you have organized uh, perhaps differently or other in, in other way? Yeah, another way. I think it's. Um basically like the similar um, topics like to maybe also um, get like the IT involved in a more earlier stage also from from our side um, and um, yeah just bringing them together on a, on a, on a, on a table and discussing things um, because like uh, I tend to um, yeah um, like that things are really easy in IT but when I talk to my IT colleagues uh, sometimes it's uh, bigger than expected and um, so it's, it's really helpful to really in, in include them in, in also the, the process in the warehouse not only like from our perspective from the that was a learning from us mm -hmm. so not, the, not only the robot is important to um, what we have for requirements but also to match this with the customer process and this mm -hmm. is um, from from every project is different um, so that was also learning from from us also in the in the last month with different customers but also with ASICs that we are not only looking at our robot um, it's really important also to look at the whole end-to-end -end process mm -hmm. um, to really get the, the most out of it and um, an end-to-end -end process I mean like really the process integration mm -hmm. um, not only the process integration from the magazino classes, but also from the uh, from the customer. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, so uh, optimization over the entire process, not just saying, okay, I have the solution for the small piece yeah. of the process where I could use the robot, so to speak. Exactly. And it more and more came also to on our desk that we are not only implementing into brownfield operations mm -hmm. like we did here in Prefold, but mm -hmm. also that um, customers are coming to us saying, hey, we want to build a totally new. A warehouse. Uh, we have a hall here. We want to do our e-commerce business. Mm. Put out the data and mm. please design a, a process concept for us. Um, so that's what we learned a lot in the last month, doing it together with customers and also yeah. with and external partners. I think you have interesting partners for that. Uh, so uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Maybe so in our last financing round. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's taking taking a look at the, at at the future, uh, Michael. You already indicated some some things that you would like to 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 do with the robot more. So use the data more. Uh, are there other fields? I mean, at the moment there are only picking. Are there other fields where you, where you we would could imagine that uh, the, the robots will be will be used? Definitely. Um, I mean, as I said today, we are picking. What we will look at is the the count and control master data, so the measurement. We need to look at replenishment as well, in order to. And, and we need to, to understand where replenishment does make sense, because as Julia said, you know, uh, putting five, six uh, shoes into 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 a big location is maybe easier by a human or faster. But in uh, let's say in a situation where we ecom is growing and growing, we we are discussing right now, and that's why together with Julia and the team, we are discussing right now a whole process from let's say ecom returns, ecom replenishment, ecom warehousing, and ecom outbound. And mm -hmm. that's something there where we are as well learning, let's say, and elaborating what, what would be the right sized model for us. Mm -hmm. Ideas, you know, nothing, nothing which is on paper fully yet, but ideas can be mm -hmm. that uh, you have an area in the building with, uh, let's say, A movers, right, for, for e com, where you let this area handle by 99.9% .9 by the robots only. You know? So you have handover stations where you put the full cartons on the returns. During the night, the robot is taking product replenishment the shelf. During the day or whenever is uh, you know outbounding, so picking out of the shelf and then dropping indeed and um, the the singles or doubles etc. into a, onto a bed to a packing machine. Right, mm -hmm. that there is really no human interaction really needed. Then mm -hmm. in our heads, uh, whether it will be this year, next year, or never, we don't know. Um, but at least that's uh, let's say a potential mm -hmm. that we are discussing right now. Yeah. And from, from your perspective, Julian, not, not just looking at the Essex operation, uh, what, what other fields do you see uh, developments for you for, for, for robots from, from your from Magazino perspective? Yeah, so um, maybe you also know that Magazino not only has the robot for uh, picking shoeboxes, we also have, um, it's called Soto, um, um, a robot which is um, yeah, still in a piloting phase, but um, handling um, bigger like toads. Um, especially for um, production supply. So we have uh, their development partners like BMW, so more from the manufacturing area, not like from e-com fulfillment mm -hmm. fashion. Um, so this is one um, area we, we want to go with. So different, um, yeah, let's say use cases for our um, robots we, we have. So also with Tohu for picking shoe boxes, it doesn't have to be a shoe box, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, we are also still open or we are open for um, different kind of um, objects um, having the dimension of a, of a, a shoe box. Mm -hmm. So it can be also um, evolved and um, yeah, adding new use, use cases. Um, and also like what, what Michael said for replenishment, um, um, that we also, they are still like also our robots are still um, improving and getting better. Um, new features are coming in for example we are at the moment evaluating if we can pick out of a full card box so mm -hmm. that um, there's coming from replenishment the full card box with 20 shoe boxes mm -hmm. from the same SKU, and we can directly pick out of this card box mm -hmm. uh, so th those are all aspects or areas um, we are open also discuss with the market and uh, with mm -hmm. the customer um, to uh, yeah. To develop this and mm. keep off here. Very interesting. Thank you very much for the conversation. It's really, really interesting, and thank you for the insight. We I already saw that a lot of my questions have been answered, and I already took some some questions that were already posted. Yeah. But there are a lot of uh, interesting other ones which I would like to give the opportunity to take a look at. So we're going to switch to the to a Q and A session where we can uh, can add these uh, questions. Yeah. So I would like to say um, some of them. Some of them have already been answered. Um, I don't know. I think there were some um, about breaking and aisles, like we exactly. Have. Exactly. I'm just looking, <laughs> scrolling through yeah. them. Sorry. <laughs> so all right, then I think I can. Uh, there is obviously. 
So are the requirements to the hardware as racking shelf walk aids or are there any preferred dimensions? So I guess that you can, you know, optimize and you can have the perfect uh, sh uh, shelves, etc., which mm -hmm. potentially can be a really a, a, a walk ale, which is really 90 centimeter where you can have one robot and then you have a very narrow and you have a situation that you can, you know, maximize the space. What we, which would be my solution, which can fit in a certain situation, right? For us, it was important to really not touch yet any ale and any shelf and, you know, just mm -hmm. use the ones that we have. Mm -hmm. And yes, we have a, let's say, um, double stacked shelf. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, however, we are, you know, we are picking right now only the, the first ones, right? So mm -hmm. a single stacked shelf would definitely increase, I guess, the the reachability of, uh, of product. However, we decided for that um, and still are, are happy with the performance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, then a next question, which is a, a little bit adding on to the previous one. Mm -hmm. It's about going into the to height. Yeah. In a previous interview, you mentioned, Julia, that, it's all, you, that the robots are uh, also suitable for, for mezzanines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but um, like at the moment or like from our experience from different projects, it's also um, like two, like we can reach two meter 50 at the moment. Um, like, um, so the, the upper shelf is two meter 50. Um, and um, like the use case with our robots is that there's still humans in the same area, right? So mm -hmm. if um, humans um, want to pick on the same height, um, Three meter fifty, I think, is um, yeah too high for humans. So, or, not or even in Holland. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they have all basketball players yeah. as speakers, but um, yeah. But so mm. for, for, from, for feedback from the customer, um, that two meter fifty is uh, the good height for um, for increasing the volume and um, to use this this shelf um, as added. Um, as added on top. Um, but what you mentioned, we can, of course, drive on mezzanines. We have some um, limitations on the surface load. So um, like the robot, the weight of the robot is 295 kilo with payload. So when boxes are in, they're fully stacked. Um, so this has to be considered when thinking about like um, driving with the robots on pick towers or mezzanines. But usually, it's, um, yeah, it's no problem or no challenge. Okay, uh, Michael, there's a very good question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the warehouse in south of France that you benchmark productivity? Oh yes, that's a nice game that we are playing on a daily basis. Uh, who did more? Who did it faster? Etc. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, it's, it's it's to be honest, it's really difficult to compare um, because the, the order structure is different, the layout is is completely different. Um, in, in the warehouse in south of France, uh, but uh, what we are comparing is, um, is, is, is comparable, let's, let's say it like that. And um, yeah, well, I mean, we don't have robots, uh, this particular type of robots in, in this other warehouse, uh, let's say yet. Um, slightly different um, order structure there, so um, let's see. I mean, uh, the idea was to, 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 to check it out at this warehouse. Um, in particular due to e-com and the high number of small orders, which, um, yeah, and what the future will bring, let's see. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, in addition to this question, I, I already asked the question on ROE and there was another uh, one on ROI uh, in, 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 the, in the question. How, what is it? Um, um, can, you, can, you, can you tell me, can you elaborate a little bit de deeper in, in, into it, on it, sorry? On the return on investment. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, simple sheet. We did it uh, together with Magazzino. So we tried to, you know, understand uh, all the different angles that uh, that we have, which is obviously the investment, right? Mm -hmm. Which is obviously the, the the service fees, the server fees, whatever you you, you need to take in there, the electricity, um, and uh, the total price of ownership. Let's say then mm -hmm. it's. The and on our side, so uh, what does the, the interface cost? What is the, the internal labor for the whole project, let's say? And then what is our performance for this particular order type per hour per day? Mm -hmm. per week, huh? And mm -hmm. that's the, the operational, you know, benchmark of, uh, okay, the human can pick, I don't know, five units uh, during an hour and the robot is doing 7.5. Mm -hmm. So 
that's where the, the, the cost savings, let's say, come from, which then ideally overcompensate the, the mm. So basically, yeah, everything, but the, the plus yeah. from the which I think, which is the right approach, I think. Yes. Okay. Um, you already mentioned the, the double double D boxes. Um, so I would like to go to the next, which was one of the questions that came up. Um, required maintenance. What is how is maintenance organized, uh, Julia? Mm -hmm. So, um, like when we when we close a project, we also have like um, um, yeah service level agreement, let's say so, uh, which includes a service and maintenance contract. So there are um, yeah yeah continuous maintenance every half a year where um, a magazino um, yeah service guy is coming on site, checking on the robots. Um, what Michael said, cleaning the sensors, making sure that everything is, is running. Um, and then on the other hand, um, in this uh, service and maintenance contract, we also have a remote service. So, uh, for example, if there's a problem um, with the robot, um, Michael can dial a number, a service hotline, and there's a magazino guy answering and trying to, um, like, can go on remotely on the robot and can fix the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like what is included in this um, service level agreement and also some yeah, spare parts, um, which, is, is, which are also like um, part of the, the contract. Mm -hmm. so, but usually it's a half yearly uh, on site, um, like really checking on the hardware. Um, but of course, um, like this was also a question, like more um, yeah, arrows are coming like from the software or that the robot is um, yeah, um, maybe not seeing the barcode or anything like this. So um, this can be also managed by our remote servers. Mm -hmm. And we also maybe add to this, train people on site when handing over the robot system, we train the, um, the operation to, um, to also fix smaller um, issues right? yeah. with yeah. video like uh, like an ikea um, um description where you can uh, see what you have to fix and how do you do it um so you don't have to be a technical guy to do this um so we offer or like we do trainings there as well okay excellent um there has been a question by Jaswant again about uh, further services that you would like to uh, or expect a robot to do in, in, term, in, in addition to what has already been said, I think. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> that's a good no, question. I mean, that's, that's obviously a different, uh, difficult thing, right? What 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 we said is um, handing over on instead of on pick cards um, on a bed, which will obviously help the downstream process. Um, the replenishment is a topic. Uh, the controlling on or the, the, the counting is definitely a topic for us, which which would be the next uh, next level, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, master data or like because we take with every pick, we take um, like the length and the width of the box. Yeah. So here you can compare it with your already existing master data, um, or you can um, like or implement um, an interface which where we um, give the, the master data to the customers. Um, so this can be added value as well. Yeah, absolutely, for optimizing what packaging, etc. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. would be great would be a scale in the robot as well, so that we can, you know, not only have the dimensions, but as well. Yeah. Yeah. I right. know you wish. <laughs> I, should, I should charge her. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> Um, very interesting question again from 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 Martin. From Martin. Uh, if you have a uh, Martin Bakker, if you have a greenfield situation, would you also choose the solution that you chose? I guess that really depends on the on the business that you have and on the business case that you have. But um, to be very honest, for for shoe boxes, um, that still makes sense, right? So for shoe boxes, this is a solution where you can have let's say robots helping you out on during the night, etc. On, on, on for the baseline, let's say. Mm -hmm. Then you have in the same area you can pick your humans and you can, you know, in a multi-channel warehouse, you can still do all your manual work that you need to do, right? And you do this in, in one area with humans and robots next to each other. Mm -hmm. Well, for this business case, if my business would be like it is today, um, I guess yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then one last one before we wrap it up, because time has flown by very quickly. 
from Willem Schurz, what is your view on the future of this kind of robots compared to the development of movable, movable sh shelving where robots move to single racks? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, again, that I mean, my view on it is um, definitely both solutions are, are great and it depends on, on your environment, right? So when I have a shelf with, um, let's say, very tiny things like, you know, accessories or, or cables or, or even T-shirts, right? or socks or whatever, then potentially a moving shelf, which brings me the goods to the human or to the packing station is an interesting case, which uh, to be to be honest, uh, is, is worth looking at. And then you have the shoe boxes or any other things which have the dimension, dimensions for, for the total, which yeah, is definitely next to each other important. Yeah. And maybe right. you can also combine it, um, like that's exactly. For example, uh, we put on a cart, on a big cart, and a AGV is coming, driving under the cart and bringing it. Like it depends mm -hmm. on the infrastructure, what you said, and where are where's the shelving, where's the packing, mm -hmm. what's the distance. Um, Interesting. Yeah, that is yeah. I think what you really, really said that you need to look not only at uh, you know robots and the picking process, but as well mm -hmm. into the upstream and downstream processes and how to mm -hmm. integrate it into into the whole chain. Uh, where mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting. So thank you very much for answering all of our questions, not just mine, but also from our, uh, from our, from our viewers. Um, that also means that we come to the end of our webinar. Uh, thank you very much to the, to the both of you and all of our viewers for being uh, here today. It has been really interesting. I learned a lot. Um, should any of one of you still have questions that are currently not answered or you haven't, or you, you come up later, then please contact us and we'll make sure that uh, you, we'll, get, we'll get you in touch with, with everybody so that you get your answer that you need. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'd like to re re review, uh, re have to take another look at the, at the webinar, it's going to be recorded, it's going to be published on the same link that you used before to enter the webinar, but also on YouTube, so you can, you can uh, look it up there. Uh, I think so. Thank you to the both of you, to our excellent speakers, for their in contribution. It's been really, really insightful. Is there anything that you would like to add? Um, well, I would just add, like, if you want to get in, like, touch with the technology or see the robot in your um, infrastructure, what we offer since yeah, end of last year. Um, we did like this kind of Togo roadshow uh, around mm -hmm. Europe, where because all fairs are cancelled and. You, are, you don't have the chance to see the robot um, really um, or getting in touch with it. So we come for, for example, for one day on the side, um, like showing the robot with your boxes and with the infrastructure, of course, not with a live interface because mm -hmm. it needs more effort, but um, just also to get all the, the stakeholders um, yeah, on site and showing the, the technology. So if you're interested, just ping me a message. All right, excellent. That sounds uh, very interesting. Um, so that's 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 again many thanks to all of you, and I hope to see you all again in our next uh, webinar. And a special thanks to Magazino for helping us uh, organize this uh, today. It was really appreciated. And uh, till the next one. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.